Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to part 5 of Final Fantasy 2, the Pixel Remaster. And today, before we go to Kashan, I managed to find the Chocobo Forest. By the way, this is the first game to ever introduce the Chocobo. I mean, if people haven't rage quit from the battle system, they probably wouldn't have noticed that. But, one thing is perfectly clear, so long as you're riding the Chocobo, there's no reason for you to have encounters. And that's the only way you could fast travel into this stage. So, welcome to Kashun. And an enemy that's literally out on the field, Vampire Thorn. Because Leg Eaters were in Finn and they're also out on the field too. So, yeah. We're just going to go through the entirety of this stage because, let's face it, there are enemies here. But first, we need to go and get the key item. We already have the key item, actually. The Goddess Bell, which Joseph just got recently killed by a rock for back in Part 4. So now, we run into our replacement party member, which is Gordon. And, folks... Get used to Gordon, you will see him again. I mean, yeah, he is a coward starting off, but you do give him that ring. And eventually, Gordon will come in here. Well, whether you give him the ring or not, it doesn't matter. He will come here in Kashun, And on top of the fact, <clears throat> he will join your party. And he is the spearman of the party by default. You can give him other weapons, too. But, Gordon will join on, and, uh, let's just say he, uh, he doesn't really start off with good stuff. For me, I'm just gonna say it, I won't worry about powering up Gordon until we get to the Leviathan, and there's a reason why we might need him for the Leviathan. Not the Leviathan, I meant the Dreadnought. Why, said the Leviathan. I was thinking of Final Fantasy XII, wasn't I? Anyway... Let's be honest, folks. When it comes down to... Uh... The Dreadnought, it's going to be a tougher area. More often than not, that's where people would rage quit because they realize, oh crap, the difficulty just got excessively hard. And that is the case too here. So, I dare say, while Gordon is holding his own with the spear, it doesn't really matter. And by the way, that Cure Tome is literally to have one more healer on your team, and that's all that's for. The downside about giving him that Cure Tome is he's not coming back after this. Well, after the, oh, after the Dreadnought, sorry. Not the Leviathan. I keep thinking of Final Fantasy XII because they have a Dreadnought named the Leviathan, and they also have a Dreadnought named the Shiva and the Bahamut, and the Ifrit. Meanwhile, in case you're wondering about everybody else, all except for Furion broke the force. And, well, Furion and Gordon, anyway. Seriously? Th th they're doing Furion dirty, even though, to be quite frank, I don't like Furion at all. <laughs> in, in Dissidia, I found him to be a bland character, to be honest with you. That's just my opinion. I know somebody will say, that's the worst opinion ever, but yeah, he is a bland character to me. Oh, right, and I came here in this area for a reason of turning on the encounters, because that's where you're going to find v the Were Rat. And, uh, funny thing about this game, they have a weapon called Were Weapons, or more likely the Were Staff. The Were Staff takes care of. Wear animals. 
one of which will end up being renamed something far more annoying, the Were Cat, otherwise known as the Carol. And it is going to be absolutely annoying. Oh, and speaking of things that are annoying, <laughs> rates! You see, here's the thing about the rates that you need to understand. They hit you, they heal. And, uh, they do hit hard if you're Gordon. And I managed to use life on all but two of the zombies. Missed them. We're gonna go on ahead and cure Gus just cause. Did we get one? Nope, we only got one. So screw it, we might just kill him with the... Oh man, they're getting stronger now. Let's just kill them. They don't have much health, but life, if I was lucky or if it was more powerful, would have gotten rid of all of them. Oh yeah, Gus is in the four hundred is in the five thousands now. Fantastic. Not like it'll matter because so long as my defense is low, Gus is probably gonna be one shotted. That's just how this game works. Alright, now we're on the third floor. Let's see what's all in this area. Oh, wait, more rare rats. Fantastic! I will say, the were rats, if they bite you, they're poison uh, based, so I would be careful. The were cats also do that too. And speaking of which, you'll probably run into them in the next part. And oh, we got ogres! Yay, like I didn't want to see these guys again from Final Fantasy. Uh, 10 at least. The ogres were actually uh, pains in the asses in Final Fantasy 10. Especially if you didn't take them down really quick. Because they would actually put up their dukes and start beating you down. In 10 2, they're worse. Because I think one recolor of ogres. When they oversold, they give themselves a hero drink and make themselves invincible, which is freaking stupid. And if you didn't have the spell on hand, you probably would die. Or have to run away or both. But, good news is, at least all the zombie enemies will take fire damage. That's the best news out of all of this. Alright. Is there a way to get down? No, there isn't. Okay, I guess. Let's see what's on this floor. Because the encounter rate is high in this area. I might as well just say it. And this might be a great place to grind for the end game, but the encounter level is ridiculously high. Only 23. Really? Well, to be fair, Gordon does have a weak staff. I mean, a spear, sorry, a weak spear. And I also find it funny that Gordon just leveled up HP and I didn't. Well, Furion did, but only up to 3,000. Ah, <sighs> good lord have mercy. Again, I wouldn't worry about... Oh, look! We got more were rats, and they ambushed us. Huh, so I didn't get poisoned this time around. Because normally when those bastards bite me, I get poisoned. Must be the evasion or something. Alright, let's just. Let's just kill these guys off. Well, most of them anyway. And Gordon will just be there curing himself. Yeah, I know my setup looks very weak. But, this is how I'm going to roll. Well, as far as Gordon's concerned, I wouldn't have to worry about him for quite some time. Because again... Ooh, I got the golden shield. Uh, let's go on ahead and give that to Furion. Well, I got golden armor. Might as well give him golden shield as well. 
yeah, I managed to score that when I was off screen grinding in um, Finn. So there's that. I know what you're thinking. The golden armor is worthless. Uh, in a way, since you might be right. But here's the thing. The golden armor will give you some sort of uh, defense. Because there's one thing that does not raise with this half-assed battle system. And that's the defense. And I'd rather not be low on defense. If I could help it, one or everybody will have golden armor. That's if I can help it. If I can't, oh well. That Gus is almost at 6,000. Come on, nah. Let me get some goddamn leveling. Alright. Let's set them all on fire. You know, I find it strange that area of effect magic just does weaker damage to actual uh, single target magic, which is strange. But oh well. Alright. Let's open this. We got Werebuster. That's the weapon I was referring to. And Werebuster kills Were enemies. Meanwhile, let's see what I got here. Oh no, I gave that Mithrax to Gus. Let's see. Werebuster. I'm not going to give that to anybody except for. For maybe, uh. You know, I am tempted to give this to Maria just cuz. That's what I'm gonna do. Give that to Maria. So let's all set these guys on fire. Why not? Because the rates are just there. And there they go. And that takes care of all the rates. And it didn't make me level at all. Alright, off with the encounters. So what's in this door? And what's in this room? Oh, that's not fun! Hey, we've already fought this thing! In fact, it was literally the boss of the snow caves. Well, uh, bullshit begets bullshit, I guess. And... Might as well just use Cure on him. And we'll just burn it alive and see if it dies. And there it goes. Well, I guess that works then. So what was... That was it? That's all that was there? Okay, I guess. So let's see, do we have another... Oh, I was about to say there was another place that they had, um... The, uh, treasure chest, and apparently not. Now, while it would be like... For... Oh god, I don't want to have to face this thing again! But as I was about to say, while it would be for achievement purposes to get all the chests... Uh, sometimes I forget how to get them. Just saying. Ooh! Oh no, Gordon got smacked up! That's not good at all. But you think Gordon would actually level in health? Oh, he did! <laughs> and in stamina and in strength! Wow! Just for being smacked in the face by a turtle. Let's, uh, you know what? No, let's grab some items here. I'm gonna go on ahead and grab a high potion and use that on Gordon. Eh, it doesn't matter. We'll end up getting more health later on. But we're almost out of this place. We still got a long way to go. In order to do that, we're gonna have to go this way. Let's see if there's monsters here. There's monsters! 
Oh, joy. Mines. They're the creepier versions of balloons. And I'm going to destroy them all. No, seriously, I'm going to destroy them all. So what's in this box right here? Another set of golden... That's going on Gus. That is going on Gus. I don't care. Yeah, that may lower his evasion and cause some magic interference, but you know what? That treasure chest right there... Oh, more stuff. Antidote. Mallet. And eye drops. All right. That treasure chest that we went there and opened gave us a, a way for us to keep our defenses high. <coughs> oh, and look, we run into a recolor, and that's the Ogre Mage. Oh, joy. Uh, excuse me one second, I'll be right back. Oh, sorry about that. Oh, I almost had an asthma attack there, my bad. But whatever the case, the Ogre Mage is, well, exactly that. An ogre that does magic, and I am not going to sit around and find out what kind of magic it does. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to watch it die, and that's all there is to it. Oh, now Furion actually leveled up. You know what? I could give that Mithril Shield over to Gordon. It doesn't really matter, because the Mithril stuff that I'm going to give him... Oh, so long as I don't give him anything like, uh, extravagant stuff. Like, uh, the Mithril Spear that I'm gonna, uh, that I went there and already bought for, uh, Maria. I'm gonna end up making Maria use the Spear later on. But so long as I don't give him anything extravagant, it's still gonna be okay. But I was already here. Hmm. Uh, let's see. I think we need to go this way. I'm looking at the map, so this will lead me down, which will bring me to this area here. So that's how you get there, folks. And, oh, this is the boss. What do you know? The boss is staring right at us. And I forgot to bring a goddamn tent. That would have made things a lot easier. So... We'll have to kill this thing first before we get to Eagle's Tor- Or Eagle's Soul- I mean, Torch, yes. So, you're thinking, since this thing looks like a gigantic fireball, first thing you're gonna do is do blizzard attacks to it, right? Wrong. Blizzard will only heal it. Oh, and if I'm not mistaken, that goes for every magic. Funnily enough, this works in my favor and also hurts me at the same time because you see, um, even though my magic hit it, it still counts as me using magic. So that just means that my magic is going to be a lot strong. Oh God. I forgot that thing has uh, level 5 magic, so yeah, uh, Gordon is going to get wrecked. And I'm only doing this so that I can raise my fire to a higher level. Eventually, I'm going to have to raise all of my magic to higher stats. Thing of the matter is... Um, Oh, and now I'm getting a taste of my own medicine, a Fire 7. And that's the part where I say, screw it, we're going to attack it. And get wrecked with thunder. But the Axe Murderer is going to keep doing some dirty shit. And I call him the Axe Murderer because, well, that's pretty much what Gus is going to be by the end of this game. I only need one weapon for Gus, and that's it. The axe. Let's see. Uh, 
I should go on ahead and start putting in some, uh... Oh, yeah, and by the way, he's immune to all magic! Well, even if I silenced him, it wouldn't have mattered. You wanna know why? Because he absorbs that too! Which is strange! How do you absorb silence magic? It, it makes no sense! But we'll have to redo every single bit of damage we just did to this thing. But now it can't attack us. That's the good part. Silencing it is a good idea. And I barely did any damage to. Oh, it, it, it actually does some high physical damage there. But it doesn't matter. Everything worked out fine in the end. Cause... Uh... Furion's sword and shield went up. Maria's bow went up. Uh... Gordon's spear went up. But nothing for Gus. Why? But we got Egil's torch. And now, that since we beat the uh, red flame, which was practically the torch itself... We're going to have to go to the Sunfire back at the beginning of the stage. Because I'm not going to use Teleport to kill myself to get to the front of the stage again. That would be stupid. But also it would be faster. Yeah, I, I'd rather want to conserve my, my uh, HP. But in the off chance I do that when I get to the next dungeon... No, not the Leviathan. No, no, no. No, not the Leviathan. I'm at the Dreadlord. I keep calling it the Leviathan because I'm thinking of Final Fantasy XII. Yes, I missed that game. I missed that game dearly. That's literally the... Like, the soul of this channel. The very first time I actually did an LP. And it was a catastrophe. But still... <clears throat> At the end of the day, we're going to have to go to the Dreadnought, and we won't be able to teleport from the Dreadnought at all. So, the next dungeon we do teleport, I'm going to have to use that. However, at my own risk. Ugh, for crying out loud. I'm going to have to go back down the stairs. I have to go up just to go down. But this is the Sunfire! Use a gill's torch, and we got the sunfire. So, now that we have that, we have the means to blow up a goddamn dreadnought, and that is exactly what we're going to do. Oh. Well, as uh, Hilda is coming to see about our progress, the dreadnought followed Sid and Hilda. And has hijacked both of them. And now. Now. We're going to have to save both Sid and Hilda. Well. That was a predicament. So with that said ladies and gentlemen. I'll see you all in the next episode of Final Fantasy 2. When we go after the Dreadnought finally. And save Hilda and Sid. This is RVMan985. Peace out, and take care. Good lord.